Hello, this is Sherry Truler with Red Apple Auctions, and I have a bit of a bad story to share with you, but one that we can learn a lesson from with regards to insurance and benefit auctions. So let me tell you the story, and then I'll kind of share with you how you can avoid having something quite as catastrophic happen to you in the future. Uh, so as I'm typing this, it's in September of 2010, but in early August of 2010, there was a story that came out, so this is a month ago, about a benefit auction item which had been stolen, and it was to benefit the Lexington affiliate of the Susan G. Komen uh, for the Cure group. Turns out that the item that was stolen was a pink Harley Davidson Sportster. It had been signed by a number of country music stars, Dolly Parton, Tim McGraw, uh, Taylor Swift, and so forth. So it really was irreplaceable. It had been out in the parking lot. It was in a trailer, which was also the intent was to sell the bike with the trailer. They had chains wrapped around it as well. Unfortunately, when the employees came back to work on Monday morning after a weekend break, they saw that the bike had been stolen. Evil. So, what this brings to mind, well, security for one, insurance is the other one, and so I thought I'd spend today talking a little bit about some insurance policies that may be particular for, you, particular for your event uh, with a benefit auction. Certainly, I know that some of my clients could use these as well. The first one I want to talk about is property damage insurance, and this really covers the damage or the loss of property to the policy holder. So, for instance, let's say, uh, as I had one of one client this past year who'd set up their benefit auction the previous night. In fact, some of the restaurants as well that were going to be participating in the event had also set up the previous night. And so they locked the doors for that evening and they left. Now, fortunately in their case, nothing was taken. But let's say that a thief had broken in there and stolen maybe some of the, a couple of the laptops that were going to be used for the registration and checkout, and maybe they took some of the pots and pans uh, that the restaurant had put in there. Well, in a, in, with the property damage insurance, that's usually just for the policyholder. So if the nonprofit held that policy, then their computers would be covered, but not the pots and pans from the restaurant because the policy was not held by the restaurant. But that's an example of uh, insuring some of the items that you might have on site at your event. Another one is commercial general liability, also called comprehensive general liability. This is kind of a basic business insurance policy. It covers a lot of general risks to property and people. Chances are, if you have anything unique about your event, for instance, if you're serving alcohol, that would probably require an additional rider or an additional policy of some sort, and that's something you'd work out with your uh, insurance agent. The third one is fire legal liability. You know, I once worked a charity auction where there was a bit of commotion on the floor because one of the centerpieces started to catch on fire. Now, there weren't any flames, but it was smoking, and the guests around very rapidly took the water that was in the centerpiece. There had been a floating candle and doused it, and, and uh, nobody was hurt. But caused a bit of a ruckus over there for a moment. That would have been an example where fire legal, li legal liability would have come into play should the place ignited. Oh, you know, you can even see an example perhaps of where you might have an auction volunteer who inadvertently bumps a can of Sterno, it, it falls to the ground, it ignites the drapes, and next thing you know you're sitting in front of a smoldering venue that you had rented for your charity auction. <laughs> That is when you would hope that you had a fire legal liability policy in place. The final one is event cancellation. And if you're holding an event maybe outdoors or you're concerned about weather, gosh, this past spring we had some serious snowstorms here in the D.C. area that caused some events to get canceled. Um, maybe you've got unforeseen circumstances, labor disputes, right? You're afraid that the hotel where you're holding the event is going to have some, some problems with labor, maybe union is going on strike or something. Or even if you can imagine, if you would have been hosting your benefit auction at the Opryland in Nashville in May earlier this year when they had those massive floods, and they're still closed. So if you would have been having your benefit auction there at any time after the floods, that would be an example of event cancellation insurance and having a policy in place to make sure that you're protected so that maybe all of the people that you'd locked in, or if you had to refund tickets for the event that you had, it would be covered here. 
So, just some food for thought there. Of course, I'm not an expert in insurance, but you can certainly talk to someone who is, and that'll give you some uh, verbiage to use when you're in discussions with them. I'm Sherry Truler with Red Apple Auctions. For additional ideas, check out our website at redappleauctions.com. And I encourage you, if you're interested in learning about what's selling right uh, well right now in auctions, to download our auction item guide. Anybody who wants it, I go ahead and immediately send that out to you per your registration online. You'll get that so that you can use it at your next procurement meeting. Thanks for watching and good luck to you in your benefit auction.